Low-fee private schools are um, a phenomenon that have grown substantially in a number of developing countries in recent years. They, although I don't think there's a sort of fixed definition, but they're commonly understood to be schools that are run by private entrepreneurs, often individual um, family members and so on, who run these schools for a profit, so they charge fees. But they charge relatively low fees, which is um, meaning that they are potentially accessible to poor parts of the population in these countries. One of the big disadvantages um, is that they're not actually accessible to all poor children. So I think this is where I, I would say that the issue is more on quality and choice for those that have a choice, but there are many who don't have that choice, who fall below the, um, the, the, the line at which you, they could afford to pay the fees and the additional costs needed to attend those schools. I would also add that in terms of the quality, it's a marginal increase in the quality, so it's not to say that as the private schools are of acceptable quality. Part of the problem is certainly that the low-fee private schools only have to be just above the standard of the um, government schools. I mean, that they are partly that the characteristics of the low-fee private schools are different, so in terms of the class size, in terms of the teaching in English, those characteristics are different. But in terms of the actual standards, they, they, are not, they don't have to actually be leaps and bounds ahead of the government schools in order to attract the parents um, to those schools. I think also that there is a lack of information for parents as well as for researchers on what the outcomes of these low-fee private schools are. So the parents are basing their judgments on the factors such as the, the language of instruction and the class size. They're not really able to, fact, to, to base their judgments on what the learning outcomes are at the end of the, of the, of the um, primary cycle, for example. One of the issues in looking at the extent to which um, the incomes of the poor people are being spent on the costs of low-fee private schooling depends on the, who it is that you're looking at. If you're looking on average in urban slum areas, you might be saying that on average it's 5 to 10% of their income. But when you look at the poorest quintile, the poorest 20% of the families living within those urban slum areas, you'll find that it's a much higher proportion of their income. So in Nigeria, for example, it's been found in some recent research that it's up to almost half of, their, of the, these very poor families' income is spent on the costs of going to um, low-fee private schools. The long-term consequences of low-fee private schools is potentially that as, as less and less is invested in government schools, if that is one of the outcomes of depending on low-fee private schools, the poorest who at the moment only have recourse to government schools will either have recourse to an even poorer quality government school or those schools will cease to exist in the areas in which they're living, which means that all they will have access to are low-fee private schools, which aren't going to have um, strong competition um, to mean that they are going to be of high standards and for those that can't afford the fees that they aren't going to be able to go to these, the, these low-fee private schools at all.